I've often been called a night owl. And that's because it's at night that I see the clearest. It's at night where I track down and expose all the hidden mysteries and all the concealed gifts that are invisible by day. It's at night where I access my deepest self. And it's from there that I serve. Welcome back. Uh, we are uh, having technical difficulties, and primarily because we're on the road. We're now really down south in South uh, Mexico, in southern Mexico, in the tip of uh, the peninsula of Cabo. And we've been moving around and unable to bring in a show last week, but we decided to bring it this week because it's just been something on my mind that I want to share. Now, that being said, um, again, welcome to Lessons from the Epin Master. I'm Joseph, and I'm the host, and this is my sidekick, Danette. Hello, everyone. Okay. Now, let me get jump right into it. Now, the reason why I really want to talk about this because it was because I realized it could be a key or a missing link for some of you in understanding what is stopping you from having or creating what you want to create. Now, I'll begin by a story that happened 30 some odd years ago. I was on a New York subway rushing to Jamaica, Queens, heading to the hospital there because my daughter was on the way. And I was just in shock taking that whole trip there. And I remember running full speed from the train all the way to the hospital to go meet my daughter. When I get there, they point her out and she's behind this mesh glass. And as I look through this glass, I just got lost. I was just staring. I was just telling this story to myself. I watched her as I stared at her grow, get older, and I don't know how much time passed, but by the time I finished staring at her, I already had her married with children. Now, that might sound sweet or normal or conventional, but that's where her problems started. Now, let me go to what I'm really talking about here and, and keep this story in mind as we go along. Um, are we still doing okay? doing great okay good now I had a client recently asked you know I, I'm trying to change or create something in my life and it's just not happening um, and I said to him you need to change your mind and he said what are you talking about and I said well it's probably extremely challenging to change your mind but it's nothing like having a change of heart now you know when you can have a change of heart well your life will dramatically change a change of mind can change your life quite a bit um, and the profound experience won't be like a change of heart but it could be very different uh, but it's a necessary step before you can maybe even experience a change of heart now to experience change without trauma or without something really harsh to hit you um, tends to be rare but you can do it because you want to understand how the mind functions and how it works. So this particular client wants to uh, move out of his present day experience with his wife and children. And that is obviously quite co uh, complicated, right? Because children are involved. Now the issue here is that, you know, and the, and, and the story, the issue in the, is the story that runs through his head. You see, the issue here is what he has in his mind because in his mind he's married and he has children and how does he change his circumstance now you want to understand how is that created in the first place well very similar to my daughter who i had met her married before i even touched her uh, this was a story i fed her this was a story that i saw available in her life whether i even pursued it much further or not it's the it's the narrative i held and I held for her and I fed through the years this narrative to her without even fully realizing it, as did any family members. And we do that. We receive, we give the children our narrative, our, our, our family narrative and how we should and shouldn't be, how we should and shouldn't uh, 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 live, uh, choose, uh, be with, uh, not be with. Right? This is all fed in from the family opinion how that person, you know, that child should live their lives. And they also get the input from the other side of the family, from the mother, father side, the other side. So here he is, this, this man wanting to make this change, not understanding that the position he's in today was formed by the narrative of his 
his parents and, 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 and the, his predecessors. And until he sees this story, he won't be able to change the situation because what he'll need to do is picture something different. Now, I want to give an example of what I mean by this. It might still be a little confusing. You may not know what I'm going. So uh, bear with me and do me a favor and just close your eyes. This will not take long. So everybody just close your eyes. And I want you to picture what you see when you get up in the morning. Right? I want you to picture, just close your eyes and imagine where you live in your mind. What is your life like in your mind? Where do you live in your mind? Because it may not be exactly where you're living location-wise. Is it a poor place? Is it a middle-class place? Is it a wealthy place? Where do you live in your mind? And just look at what is there in the place you live. What furniture is there or not? Do you have a vehicle? or not. Right? Don't think too much. Just see what's there, because it may look very differently than what exactly what you're living in. What are the conditions? What is the condition of the place you're in? What are the walls like? What does your paycheck look like? Do you work for someone in this in this visual? In this narrative? Does someone work for you? What do you do with this paycheck or money you make? Backpedal for a second. How much do you actually get paid in this world you live in? And again, don't get confused or, 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 or think you're doing it wrong if it's a different number in the paycheck than you actually get. Who's there with you? Is there someone else? Is there a mate or a friend or a family member? Or are you alone? I see what you do with this money of yours. How is it spent? How much for rent? How much for food? How much for gas and clothing? How much after it's all taking care of these needs you have left for some joy or contentment or party. How familiar does this image seem to you? And now notice what feelings come from these, these images that are coming from you, these images. What feelings do they have you feel? Open, closed, tight, and need a relief, free, obligated, heavy, tense. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not trying to depress you here. I'm actually trying to show you how to free yourself from this. For some of you, that is difficult. Just notice the feelings that come up from this place you live in, 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 in this image in your mind. Now open your eyes. Now be with me for a moment in this. Now, if you did this correctly, you're with the image that you wake up with. You're with the image that creates the feelings that you wake up with, and this image is created by the stories you've been told throughout your life and the experiences that have added to this. These stories have been told by your parents. Right? Because the question here is, how many of you live by what others say you should or shouldn't do. How many of you live and do and don't do according to the dictates of those that have raised you and, 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 and or brought you up in uh, through friendships or, or, or work or other ways that has helped been part of your development? How much movement do you actually have that doesn't hit up against the opinions of others. Now again, to get back to the picture and the image, notice the feelings it creates. And notice how these feelings are the natural feelings that this image would always create. Now if you try to do something different in your life, if you try to do something new 
that's different than this image. Right? What you're doing is you're now imposing an image upon an image. And so this brings me to another client who came and was kind of upset saying, you know, I, I want to have my own business, uh, but my family disapproves and they say that I don't look like myself anymore and I don't look as happy as content as I once looked um, that I uh, need to you know maybe reconsider going back to a regular kind of job now I've had this client for many years in many different bodies in that many different genders in many different forms because this is kind of an old story where someone tries to go beyond what the family has dictated, has taught, expects from the person. And so they try to start again, and they, it's a little difficult, and there's a battle, and that's because these, these two images are now fighting each other. And you're trying to be true to the image that you don't even realize is there, while you're trying to create a new image of a new life in another way. And it's very rare that a new image can be so powerful that it superimposes, that it's able to overlap. One bleeds into the other, and it makes it more difficult. So this particular person's tiredness was just in the battle of trying to place the new image ahead of the old one. So what should she do? And what about the client that wants to move on from his, pet, from his wife, his children? What should he do? Okay. So first thing is close your eyes again. Good. And return to your image. The image you wake up with every day. And allow yourself, just for now, to get back in touch with those feelings it brings up. And now allow yourself, because this is the power your mind has, to allow this image to begin to dim ever so slowly. The walls around you, the items that are in this home of yours, even the feelings that are associated with it, it all begins to dim. Allow it to go behind you away, back in the distance, until you have nothing in front of you and you're inside of nothing, just a blank space. And allow yourself to keep breathing through this. Okay, great. Now your canvas is blank. So I want you to begin to create again the image of what you want, where you'd like to live. Now this particular person wants to maybe get divorced and have his kids visit him or what have you and have room for them and picture that for an individual that's going through something like that. Picture what you want, what you would like to live in, how you'd like it to look. It's free, it doesn't cost you anything, just picture it. Right, this person about that wants to start the, a business, picture the business. Picture it booming. Picture yourself happy in it, smiling and enjoying it. And build this picture. See what items you now own that are different. See yourself content in this. And see yourself having that thing that will take you to the next place so far away from the real original image that if you woke up in this place tomorrow you'd feel whatever that image can provide you and get in touch with the feelings that come from that image right now that new home maybe new vehicle new life situation And notice what feelings come up. Again, notice the feelings, how different they are. Okay. Now, this is not to ruin it, this is just to show you what happens. Now, as you stay with that image, the new image, slowly from behind, the old image starts coming back. 
not getting rid of the new image, but it starts seeping in. So notice what seeps in first. You know, is your mother suddenly in the living room? Um, is your ex-husband or wife nagging on the phone? Is some of the family drama and wants and, and needs and stories coming back in? And now notice these two images convoluted. Notice how it makes you feel. And now allow the new image you had to disappear, to fall back, and the old image that you originally had to come forward again. It's okay. okay. I'm not going to let you stay stuck in this. Just do so. Good. And notice how that feels. And just notice which one feels better. Returning to the old image instead of the convoluted one. Not the, not the new one, the convoluted one. Okay. Now again, you're going to fade back the old image and you're going to bring the new one in full, in full, back. Like you're watching a new movie. Like you got up, you left the theater, and you're in a new movie and you're watching your new life. And now see yourself back in that new life in the way you want it. And allow everything associated with the old story, the old image, to just fall into the past, into the back, way behind you, because you already left that theater. Someone else is watching you. Maybe your brother or sister. And let it fade back. And now imagine what it would be like to wake up tomorrow seeing that in your life and in your world. How different would you live and how different would you feel because remember, as you change your image, it doesn't mean that the people that love you disappear. Okay, come back, open your eyes again. Now, if you do this every day, if you do it for 30 straight days, they say it takes about 30 days to change a habit. If you do this about 30 straight days and just wake up every morning and before you get out of bed and see this world that you see yourself living in, I understand the world you're in is not going to look the same, but just keep knowing that that is going to be the image you're walking towards, going towards. This will make it that much faster for you to have a change of mind on what you want to do next because you're going to see clearly what you're going to now need to create that. Your mind will now start working in that direction because you have to give your mind direction. And so it's images, it's these pictures or stories, whether they're moving or still, that you have in your head that keeps recreating. Thought creates. I'm going to keep repeating this. Thought creates. Everything around you, look around you, everything was created by a thought first. A table. A thought of a table. Created that table. Televisions. A thought created that. Someone had to think it before they were able to create it. So, this is you creating through your thoughts. Now again, the problem for these two people, one who wanted to start their own business and the other that wanted to leave wife and child or children and, 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 tra and change that, it all had to do with the story that they were in, the narrative they were spinning, and all the details that they wake up and start filling in. Because how many of us have awakened after a deep dream and not even known where we were at, who we are, who we are where we were going? Right? Um, you know, it reminds me of an old Billie Holiday story, uh, a song, you know, Good Morning Heartache. And it's all about how she went to sleep and dreamt of uh, being free of grief, and then she woke up and was reminded, oh, right, I'm in grief, I'm in heartache. Right? Good morning, heartache, my old friend. Good morning, heartache, sit down. Um, it's not going to disappear instantly for most of you. You may get really good at it and start disappearing things in your life much faster. But this is the key. The key is to understand that the image you hold in your mind is what you're producing. And so there's a lot of things about how to think, and this is the specific way of doing it. It's through imagining, through imaging, through seeing the image, closing your eyes and seeing what you live in, what you're believing in, what narrative you're running. 
so that then you wind up creating that as you go along. So how do you uncreate it? You literally move it away, eliminate, clear canvas and start producing fully because what most of us do is we try to blend it we try to imagine it happening in a blended fashion it doesn't have you don't have to do that all that fill-in stuff let life take care of for you because it does because when you look at your lives you didn't fill in all the details right? it, a lot of it just happens to those around you so don't worry about that you want to get the main picture so the reason why this is something I really wanted to talk about was because it was the answer to both clients' questions, two very different questions. One wanting to go, hey, I'm going to quit my business because I just don't occur happy and bubbly and my family's disapproving of that. Right? So the narrative of that person is they have to get their family approval first before they can maybe fulfill themselves. And they think that they're tired because they're doing the wrong thing, and it's not. They're tired because they're battling these two images. They're not letting one go and the other replace it, and that's the exhaustion, and that's for a lot of you. And for you know the man or, 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 or a woman that is trying to change her job, her relationship, or even a marriage situation, again, it's all that stuff we take and wake up with and fill into it rather than seeing what we ultimately want to be in. And maintaining that image causes us to become relaxed and aware and in that moment we see the way we either able to produce it or we seem to be guided to it right? so this is a real sticking point in creating now you might have read it or heard it but again it's the practice of, of, of actually doing it and doing it over and over again and this is why some people are able to create and change their mind and other people do it for a week and then they give up and then they go it doesn't work now I'm not asking for anything for this and I'm telling you this works give it a shot and so that way you know I have no inherent uh, ulterior motive in this I'm just tired of seeing people struggle and suffer and give up their dreams and their hopes and their opportunities and possibilities because they don't understand that they're living on a narrative produced a very powerful one mind you from their parents both of them and the stories that their parents told them that they're using to live their lives by and they don't even fully realize it so again the key is to begin to understand what is my original narrative what is the first thought right the first thought because the first thought is what creates right and the first thought is implanted in you by your parents and enculturated in you and 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 and, and mantra into you and, and whether it's done through schooling or religion or just constant conversations and so as you become aware, and that's where the, your, the, your own self-work comes in, in doing that part. Not in uh, 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 helping yourself through it, but in, in helping yourself see it. Taking the time and being disciplined to see this, what was told to me. What, what was put in to program me this way. Because we're all programmed to a large degree. But when you change your mind, it's another word, another way of saying you're reprogramming yourself then you will have a different outcome. I guarantee you a different outcome. Right? And, and, and if you're not, it's because you're still convoluting two images. Right? And you're going to feel what kinds of feeling. You're going to feel guilt. You're going to feel shame. You're going to feel these, these, these pangs and tugs of loyalty that you might feel towards these original thinkers who gave you the original thought, then the original idea, then the original larger uh, living concept until it became an experience that it's hard not to abide by because it's been your experience. But your experience is, comes from all these original thinkers that gave you the, your thoughts, that gave you these images, that told you what you could or couldn't do. So if we stop here, that's enough for me. I just wanted to get this across to you. Do it every day, 30 straight days. It was definitely enough for me, Joseph, but I do have a question okay. personally. Um, I understand that I do have to disconnect or almost separate from the people and the, the ties that I have that keep me entrenched in thinking, but how do I then get feedback or where do I get feedback from others to help me go forward? Then you just see others giving you feedback. You seek other people that can give you feedback. You look, you understand that there are people that can give you feedback. 
you get online and find bit chat and you, you you get feedback from me indirectly you're getting answers now as if i was so some of you i could be answering your questions already that you didn't you were about to ask you see the feedback you're already getting feedback of the life you've been living you're already getting feedback um just think of everything in the room you're in is the feedback right so if i have no window well then i believe i'm not supposed to have a window in my home right it's something that's acceptable in my family system and the difference between someone that has a window or a particular style window versus what or no window is what you've been taught so the feedback is in what you're in so imagining let's say being in a, a, a home full of windows i just moved out of a home that had all windows everywhere just about right that was something i imagined that was something i saw quite feasible as i removed and started saying no to my original programmers no i think i want something else no i see how you've died it didn't work for you it's going to make me think it's going to work any better for me no i'm not going to do the opposite of what you did because that's the same story right that's just me switching characters in this story because whenever you do the opposite you haven't left the story yet it's like being on two sides of a coin so what you when you do something that's outside of the box of what you have you're going to begin to get feedback now in the client's case that i was speaking of the feedback from the family is oh you don't look the same oh you don't look as bubbly oh you look sad oh this business is wearing you down right and that's the feedback and that means you're doing it right because now they're letting you know holy shit you're starting to get away